Hi, this is Mr. Cordes, and today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be constructing our body paragraphs for the necklace. Um, taking a look, this is the same pattern. This is the same format that we used for Of Mice and Men. We are piecing together our concrete detail, the textual evidence, as well as our commentary. Now, when we worked with Of Mice and Men, we had each body paragraph separated by character. You selected either George or Lenny, Crooks and Curly's wife. Here, we're dealing with one character. We're dealing with Mademoiselle. And for Mademoiselle, she is showcasing two themes that we have already identified. Um, looking at our past document, if you have this document um, somewhere in your files, please pull it up. It's going to have all of your information for your body paragraphs. Um, We've got the definitions, we've got the web off the words, those additional words that we use, and then we have our pieces of textual evidence. Now, you have selected two out of these three themes. And what I'd like you to do right now is on your body paragraph in this very first column, identify theme one and then list it out, and then identify theme two and then write it out. Okay, um, if you are unfamiliar about these boxes, all you have to simply do is come up here to insert table and then you can count over. I've got two columns and I've got looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, six boxes down. So that's what you would do there for that. Okay, so this way, um, as I am looking at my body paragraph, I'm going to do each component at a time. So let's say that the this first one is about selfishness oh holy cow selfishness there we go second one is about greed whichever okay um or maybe you guys have prideful whichever one you do perfectly fine however the very first thing that we need to do is we need to move over our textual evidence from this paper to our body paragraphs. So if you have selfish and you really like this piece of textual evidence, can you please take a moment and put it into the textual evidence box for, for that paragraph? Okay. Uh, if you selected prideful and you like this piece of textual evidence that you found, please cut and paste or, or retype that into that body paragraph. Okay. So the very first thing that we do is we get our pieces of textual evidence because the, the concrete detail does not, does not change. That's what we use to write around because that's the theme in which we are showing. And we've already found that piece of textual evidence for that theme. So this right here, this piece, uh, and then this piece, both are done. Okay, pause if you need to in the video in, in case uh, you're not. Finish those. Now our commentary sentences is where you go into um, adding the web off the words. So this shows that, which is a sentence starter and we'll use to take it off later. This shows that Madame Bazell is, and you're gonna go ahead and put in some of your web off the words. This shows that Mademoiselle only thinks about herself. This shows that Mademoiselle is um, self-centered and self-absorbed. This shows that Mademoiselle is whichever. You're going to do that for your first theme in both boxes. Okay. Then you're going to go on to your second theme and go for those boxes. Now we are jumping back and forth. However, what we're connected to is these components, right? Whoops. These components right here. Okay. So we have found our piece of textual evidence. We have moved that over. Now we take the words from the web off the word to construct our commentary. So it goes here, commentary. This shows that, da, 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 da. and then you begin to finish that item. Okay. This also shows that she wants things for herself. And maybe that's a, one of the greedy uh, phrases that you came up with. Okay. You piece these together. So you almost like pick a word. Pick a phrase from here, and then you stitch it into your sentences over here, okay? Now, at this point, you've got the major chunks. You've got concrete detail, commentary, commentary. That's the, that's the most important literary analysis, 
right there. Okay, now we need to cushion it with our topic sentence and our concluding sentence. So our topic sentence is going to explain and give a, uh, a little bit of heads up about what that theme word is. And lo and behold, look at this, it's like I'm setting you up for success. We actually already have a definition. So selfishness is when a person only thinks about themselves. Selfishness is constantly looking inward instead of thinking of other people, right? Greed is the desire to want more uh, and yet never being satisfied, okay? Your goal right now, ladies and gentlemen, is to create your topic sentences, crafting those definitions together. You're really not going to mention Mademoiselle because you're writing about a theme. You're talking about her here, and that's okay. But your topic sentence is going to construct what this is. Now, if your commentary, you said Mademoiselle only thinks about herself, you cannot write here for the topic sentence. Selfishness is when you only think about yourself. You do not want to repeat yourself. That's why you have multiple words and phrases in your web off the word. So if you need to pick and choose and pick something different, that is acceptable as well. Okay. So looking here, you're going to get your topic sentences complete. Go ahead and pause the video and write those out. What does your theme word mean? How is it seen in people? How do people respond to that theme word? How do people respond to someone who is extremely prideful? How do people respond when someone is, is blatantly greedy, right? Um, how do we showcase selfishness and it's known for other people? We can be very selfish quietly right? Oh, I want that for myself. I want this for myself. But it's another thing to be very loud about it. What does that look like, right? Take a moment. You've already filled out your concrete detail commentary. Now fill out your topic sentences. Pause the video, fill those out. And now that you have the first four, your concluding sentences is where you drop the mic that's where you've put your final thought in. This is where you kind of say, in conclusion, Mademoiselle, and then you reiterate how she illustrates the theme. And this one helps us connect back to our thesis, which we will be constructing later. Um, at this point, I just wanna make sure that we get the analysis down. We're not, we're not doing a book report. We're not doing summary. We are, we are having strong literary analysis. So the concluding sentence, is going to be a combination of your character, that theme word, and any additional web off the word words that you may have. So for a concluding sentence, if I've already used um, you know, a bunch of my selfish words, how else can I reiterate that Mademoiselle is selfish, right? She disregards her husband, right? She doesn't tell Madame Forestay about the necklace. Um, she, you know, oh, pride, she does not want to let her um, uh, middle class image um, uh, be ruined. And so then therefore she uh, covers up her mistakes for 10 years, right? Your concluding sentence can add in a little bit of the story details as long as it's connecting back to the overall thing that you're talking about, okay? You want to make sure that all of them connect. So take a moment, pause, go ahead for your concluding sentences. And now you should have at least five sentences, 10 total, okay? By having all 10 sentences, your next goal, ladies and gentlemen, will be to go through and read um, these sentences and make sure that they flow nicely together, okay? If you give me a textual example about her being greedy from the story where she like wants more and the dress isn't enough and she doesn't want flowers, but then you talk at the bottom about her being prideful, like that doesn't match. So you need to make sure that the topic sentence, concrete detail, they all kind of flow together. So if this entire paragraph is about selfishness, all of this needs to be about selfishness. If this one is about greed, all of this needs to be about greed, okay? And your concluding sentence should reference back to what is happening, what's going on, how does this showcase? So again, this is not summary. This is um, finalizing your literary analysis, your commentary with using additional web off the word words. Okay. Now here's the deal. Sometimes this may feel overwhelming. Oh my gosh, each sentence has to be a different thing. And I don't know if it's right. 
you guys have already done the preliminary work with this grid right here. Now that you've placed things in and have something, it's going to be a lot easier to review, revise, and improve. Okay. Um, I used to go to my teachers in high school and I would say, I really need help with this essay. And they would ask me to pull out what I've done as far as my writing. And I would say, well, I don't, I don't have anything. It's a blank piece of paper. And they would tell me, go write something and then come back. I cannot help you if you have a blank piece of paper. You have to have um, general ideas, general thoughts about this so that you are able to piece in those things. And then we can say, ah, this is good. Let's fix it so it's better. Ah, uh, this is on the right track. Not really. Let's help it get there. Okay. So take a moment at this moment in time, by the end of the video, once I click done, you should have all 10 sentences, both of your body paragraphs. Okay. Please message me if you have a, a major concern, if you're frightened, because <laughs> writing is difficult. But again, make sure uh, that you've got all 10 sentences and message me if you have any questions or concerns. Thanks, guys. Good job.